This is my garden. Yeah, it looks pretty grim. But, starting over. So let's just see what we've got so far. Got a weeping willow starting. I don't know what kind of flowers these are. They're native to Illinois. But they look like this when they're full grown. And they're monsters. Man, they got the coolest yellow flower on them. And they take all summer to bloom. And then I got, there's some more. These are, these are first year here. These are the second year. And these are a clump I transplanted. And so these are a second year, but they're not as big. <clears throat> Let's see, we got coneflowers, echinacea. And somebody told me these are corn flowers because they grow next to the corn. I don't know the name of them or the real name. Maybe they are corn flowers. No idea. A couple of baby lilac bushes in here. Let's see what else we got. Got some uh, pineapple raspberries. These are just shoots off another plant that I transplanted from. So these are first year starts. Uh, there's some more. And some roses, a snag. Somebody was gonna kill and I just transplanted them. What else you got? Oh, so kind of a mess, it's overgrown, but eventually it'll all be manicured nice and neat. But it's kind of what I got to work with right now. But there's like, I don't know, 50 irises in here. And they're a pretty cool looking color. Um, they were overgrown on a sidewalk. And literally the, just the roots were clumped together. And so I was able to pull them all apart and transplant them individually. So next year I'll show it all coming up. And tomato plant. There's another tomato. Not doing very well. Um, this here is some type of bush that gets a white flower on it. I forgot the name of it, but I have this here to make sure I remember. And that's what it's called. Anyways, these are some flower I planted from seed. And I don't know what they are either, but they'll get bigger. See, let's walk down here a little bit. So I had a big garden, all landscaped, nice and neat. I loved it. It was overgrown like a jungle, except it was manicured. This one here, like I said, I'm just starting, so it's it's kind of grim looking. But it'll get there. I'll keep finding stuff and put in it. Some daylilies that I found. Just kind of plopped them in. I'd like to find a bunch more. I think I spent like 11 years on my last garden and uh, I don't know kind of sucks to lose it but now I've got an acre to work with so kind of sucks in one hand but really awesome in another because I could start over with more area to work with I don't know what this is I don't know if I planted this and don't know or if it's just a weed but that bloom started about three months ago and it has a very light sweet fragrant smell to it i thought i was going to turn into a flower but that really is the flower even though it doesn't have color it still has a scent to it and like i said i don't know if it's a weed or if it's a plant i stuck in and i don't know if that's what it became or who knows what else we got it's more of that whatever it is like i said it might just be a weed but it smells good uh, that's an apple tree I planted, and I'm not sure what type because I got four different ones, and I don't remember which one's which. I'll find out when they get bigger, I guess. And some more cone flowers, some type of native grass to Illinois. I don't know what it is. I 
guess I need to learn more about what I'm planting. But I just, I don't really care about the names. I just, just like how it looks. So I, if I find that, I stick it in. <clears throat> tons and tons and tons of clover, which you can make a really good tea, tea out of this clover. Um, so that's, I think, what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna wind up doing. And here, these are my babies. These are the, like the heart of my garden. And some of these guys I've had for over 20 years, and some, you know, just a couple years, but. I just, I love them to death. Um, they're my pets. I've rescued a few of them. Um, actually, most of them. And I try to give them the best life they can have in captivity. Uh, eventually, this will be bigger. I, I can actually let them out on all of this. But uh, they stay around the house. They don't, they'll fly around the house, but they don't fly away. Oh, that's nice, Paco. You showing your pretties? Good girl. So, I got quite the variety. You know, these little guys over there, these guys are not very tame. They're the smallest ones I have. Um, I'd actually found them like two days ago, I found them. They'd squeezed through a spot somewhere. And the female was on top of the cage outside of it. And the male was over in that hill somewhere. And I went up there. I heard him calling. So I went over there and flushed him out. And he flew back to the female. And they were on the cage. And they're not tame. They're the only ones that I, I would worry they would fly away. And they didn't fly away. But to catch them was a trick. I actually got on top of the cage and convinced them with peanuts and they came over to me with peanuts and I was able to snatch them both at the same time and get it back in the cage. But the female is pretty tame for the most part. Like I can hold her and she doesn't bite but the male is very protective of her. And I think if I gave them a nesting box they would probably mate and have babies. But I don't really, I don't know, that's having babies is a whole another ball game. It's a lot of responsibility. And I don't necessarily know if I'm ready for all that, especially with all the projects I have going on. Paco, your wings are so beautiful. That's nice. And here's Harlow. I can't imagine why somebody wouldn't want Harlow. She's a female. And she's never bit me. She's very lovey. She's uh, obnoxious. She likes to play. And I've had her for probably six years. And she was alone in a room by herself. And somebody got her. And then she wound up in a garage by herself. But it was better in the garage where she was at than where she was originally at. And then after a year of her being in the garage, uh, she wound up, wound up with me. And, and the one behind her, you can't see him very well. But he's a Maui Sunshine. He is a hybrid cross between Formicaws. And... He's kind of young still, but he bonded with her, and I can't touch him unless I pick her up, and then if he wants to go with, he'll get on me, and he won't bite me. But if I try to pet her, he will try to bite me, because that's his mate. He's bonded with her, and it's a done deal. But he's up there, right behind her. I don't know if you can see him. Let me see if I can get on this side. There he is. Kind of see him. There we go. Now you can see him. Let's see who else we have. So we got these two. These two are military macaws. Harley and um, Sissy. And Sissy was born with a partial wing. And so they're, they're brother and sister. And the, the one with the full wings protects the one with the partial wing. I mean, it's amazing how much he does to make sure she's safe and this white one's gizmo she was one of my first i think she was the fourth bird i got and she was she became a plucker for some reason she plucked all her feathers and she was almost bald and i gave her some cloth to chew on and one time she got the strings wrapped around her toe 
And so she chewed her toenail off. And so I stopped giving her clothes. And I, I realized that the, the pee pads that you get for older people, um, I use those for, for uh, underneath their cages in the house because I don't have a room built for them yet. And she started making a nest out of those pee pads. And that's what stopped her plucking. She plucked the pads instead of herself. So she's doing a lot better now. And the one spreading their wings, that's Paco. Okay. And that's Lottie. And they're a bonded pair. And there's Chloe, which is a male, blue and gold. And Timba, which is a red scarlet macaw. And the story on them is weird because Chloe was bonded with a female blue and gold. And when I introduced Timba, which is the red scarlet, that was like, that became their baby. And they're very protective of her. And the story gets weirder because the female bonded with another male, but as soon as Timba and Chloe are in the same area with her, she tries to dominate and take over that relationship that Chloe has with Timba. Oops. So, yeah, Chloe's feeding her right now. But for the most part, the birds are pretty good. I mean, we have our days. Sometimes they can be aggressive. But that's just birds. I mean, you know, they, they can be tamed. But a lot of people get these birds thinking that they can be tamed and they don't talk or they don't do the things they think they're going to do. Or they make a mess. The mess these guys make is unbelievable. And that's why I wind up with so many birds is because people take on the responsibility. But it's a lifetime commitment. And these macaws, I often hear them talk about them on like YouTube where... They say, oh, they live 50 years. No, these guys live 75 to 100 years. So that is a lifetime responsibility you take when you take on a bird. And if you're not willing to invest the time and the resources and give them the space they need, don't get one. Because that's a life. And if you don't take care of it, you know, they wind up, they start self-mutilating or, you know, picking it themselves. Or they have got three in the house. Two of those are pluckers. And uh, they do better not in the group with the rest of them. There's my, one of my African greys. His, his name's Baby. And he likes to cuddle. And usually African greys about, I don't know, around three, they, they stop cuddling. And became, they become independent. And they don't really want to cuddle with you as much. But he never stopped. He likes to cuddle. And uh, so his name's Baby. And it's kind of fitting because he kind of stayed like a baby. And he talks a lot. Uh, he says a lot of things, but they say African Greys are the smartest out of all of them, and I believe he will live to be like 60 years old, if not longer. 60 for sure. And I have an Amazon there. And then, yeah, so... This is my, my new setup, and I really haven't done much with it. This is kind of my area I'm working with right now. And uh, I guess I decided to kind of start documenting this and putting it on on here to just document the change over time. So this is what I'm starting with. I wish I had my old setup. I've got, pic I've got pictures, but um, it doesn't really do it justice. I think a video would do better. But... Yeah, right now it's not much, but it'll get there. I got a lot to do. I mean, I got a lot to do. So, it is what it is. Hey, Petri. This is my most dominant. This is the, this is the head. The leader of the flock. Hi, Petrie. And this guy right here is Rusty. And he was he was raised. He was the baby of this lady's life. And he was raised until he t once he turned 10, he became very dominant, very aggressive. Even though she babied him and he acted, he was the greatest bird for her. Um, he didn't like the husband. He bonded with her, the wife. And then at one point, he bit her pinky finger and about took it off. So she called me and asked me if I would take him because she didn't know how to deal with him being aggressive. It was, it was really sad for her to let him go 
because she loved that bird. She did everything she could possibly to give that bird a happy life. And he's a male. And when he turned 10, that's usually about when the hormones kick in for macaws. And he wanted a mate. He wanted a female. And when he got here, uh, he got it. He got her. And he's really aggressive. He actually, he's killed, he's killed four of my birds. So, um, he's not as bad now, but he's got his female. But, you know, at the end, you know, it just, they all have different personalities. They all have their own quirks. And I think that's it for today. See you next time.